What do you want? You want to eat? Hmm, okay. Maybe go for a walk? What do you want? Humans have been close with dogs for a long time, probably ever since they became our faithful companions. It all started with wolves. They were the first animals to approach ancient humans at least 15,000 years ago. Nomadic hunter-gatherers tamed wolves and began using them for their own purposes. You know, to protect their communities, to hunt, and to scratch their ears. But we don't really know where or who domesticated wild predators first. Few ancient specimens have been found, and archaeology and genetics continue to provide contradictory evidence. How did wolves turn into dogs? How many hundreds of years did it take? When did it happen? Despite thousands of years of interaction with dogs, we still haven't learned how to understand them. Dennis, what are you talking about? Of course, sometimes we can guess, but that's not enough. At the same time, science is always advancing. We can already control beetles, watch the sunrise on Mars, and are getting ready to merge our brains with computers. So what's stopping us from talking to animals? As a matter of fact, nothing. When Back to the Future was released in 1985, the writers came up with some futuristic ideas that looked amazing. But of course, we're not talking about DeLorean time machines. Just remember those self-tying sneakers. Just about everybody dreamed of owning a pair, and they seem from out of this world. But then in 2016, Nike suddenly released 89 pairs of self-tying shoes. It wasn't easy to buy a pair, but the shoes were real nonetheless. So why don't scientists go further? In 2009, Pixar released Up, a very touching animated movie. It was so awesome that it opened up the Cannes Film Festival. But that's not the most important thing. If you've seen Up, you probably remember Doug and the other dogs who could speak thanks to their special collars. Sheik. Uh-huh. Speak. Hi there. <gasps> cool. What do these do, boy? Hey, would you cut that cradle contigo? I use that collar. What does you want? It seemed like a fantastic and silly idea back then, but who knows? Maybe we'll see something like that in 30 years. But why wait 30 years? Oh, yes. There are already devices and apps that allow us to communicate with our pets, or at least give us the feeling of communication. Take, for example, TalkDog, a translator from dog to English. It analyzes barking and translates each bark using predetermined phrases like, I'm very angry now, or let's play. We have to admit that these barks sound exactly the same to us, and we can't really be sure of the accuracy of the translation. By the way, there's a similar app for iPhone. Another option is PetSpeak, a small device that you can attach to your dog's collar, just like in the movie Up. It not only analyzes your pet's emotions, but also plays pre-recorded phrases. Hey, do you want a drink? Yes. Have you always dreamed of speaking through your dog and making your dog speak in your voice? What a weird dream. But it can come true. There's another cool project called No More Woof. This product may look like a pair of gaming headphones for dogs, but instead of translating your dog barks, it reads their brain waves. Then they're translated into the equivalent of human speech and can be heard through a speaker. Depending on the model, you can hear simple words like, I'm tired, or whole sentences. Of course, your dog won't quote Shakespeare or give you their opinion on the last episode of your favorite show, but still, No More Woof gives your pet a much better chance of being understood than before. In the future, the developers wanted to create a two-way communication device to allow dogs to understand us too. They'll also be adding another language besides English. They also plan to remove any kind of censoring, so if your pet is really angry, you'll immediately know it. They won't mince words. Come on, speak. But why do people want to talk to dogs? Of course, it'd be funny to hear and understand everything they think and bark about, and owners could finally know what their pets want or if they're in pain. But that's only one possible application. Let's imagine the following situation. You're at home, and suddenly you feel sick. Maybe you even fall down and can't move, and there's nobody around to call for help. No one except your dog, but he can't talk. The dog can start barking, but who'll pay attention to that? Your neighbors will probably think the dog's just bored or saw some pigeons outside the window or, well, you get the idea. In the future, the dog will be able to call 911 or at least rush outside and get the attention of some passerby. Something like that happened with a pig called Lulu. When her owner suddenly got sick, Lulu was the only one who could call for help, and she knew that. The pig ran out of the house and lay down near the roadway playing dead. It was her favorite trick. From time to time, Lulu would get up and go back to her owner to check on her condition, but then came back outside and lay down again. This went on for a while, until one driver finally stopped, curious 
because of the dead pig. Lulu brought that person to the house. Pig is in distress out here. And the stranger called an ambulance. The old woman was saved, luckily. But imagine how many people would have gotten help in time if their pets had been able to do something similar. Scientists are working on it. A team from the Georgia Institute of Technology has created a computerized dog vest that can help dogs communicate better with people. Okay. I heard the alarm. Good boy. Okay. Yes, try again. I heard the doorbell. Good boy, you sure did. Usually, guide dogs can ask for help if something happens to their owner. In emergency situations, guide dogs are trained to call the attention of other people. Help. Excuse me. Attention. But they can have problems. People might think the dog wants something else. But the vest should eliminate any misunderstandings. It has a mechanical lever that the dog can easily pull to play a message. My human needs you to come with me. Very cool indeed. So let's say we're finally able to communicate with animals using some kind of device. But maybe we should teach them to speak like humans. Unfortunately, only humans can speak like humans, with the exception of birds who can imitate different sounds. It's not easy. One of the reasons is that we have a series of special speech organs. The vocal cords vibrate, the larynx, the mouth, and the nasal cavities take certain positions, while the lips, the teeth, the lower jaw, the tongue, and the palate are moving in a certain way. Now imagine a lion trying to do the same. Besides, you have to think first in order to talk. And while it'd be tempting to hear what animals think of us, it's still a little disturbing. How do they see us? After all, humans aren't the best neighbor in the world. People deceive, kill each other, destroy nature, manipulate, and do many other terrible terrible or simply unpleasant things. Try to look at yourself through the eyes of an animal. Kind of sad, right? One day, scientists got to talk to a gorilla named Coco. More exactly, they taught her to express her feelings and thoughts in a more or less human way. Of course, it took them a very long time. Coco knew more than a thousand signs of gorilla sign language, which was invented especially for her. This is the same amount of words a three-year-old child knows. Besides, Coco understood about 2,000 words of spoken English and even knew how to joke. She also said that people are stupid and that the earth should be saved as soon as possible because time is running out and nature is watching us all. And those words make us want to cry. Unlike Coco, a dog named Stella does not speak sign language, but she's learned to use a special device with buttons. Outside. Stella wants to go play outside? With it, Stella can express some thoughts and wishes. They are quite primitive, but the dog is able to communicate with her owner, speech language pathologist Christine Hunger. She was the one who created the special program that she called Hunger for Words, and it's a really interesting device. Happy. Oh, you are happy, Stella. What about this invention from Google? You probably have used Google Translate, but you might have never used it to translate from donkey to English. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> In 2010, Google presented an Android app to help us understand our animal friends. Google Translate for Animals is an app that recognizes and deciphers words and phrases common for different kinds of animals, like cats. According to the official website, while developing Google Translate for Animals, the company worked closely with many of the world's leading language synthesis teams, as well as leaders in animal cognitive linguistics. Awesome! Where can I download it? Okay, the last example, unfortunately, was just an April Fool's Day joke from Google. <laughs> But how great would it be if we could really talk with our pets? What would they tell us? Woman, you forgot your keys and me. I can see the bottom of my bowl. So hungry. Why are you stealing the contents of my litter box? Why won't you let me dig in the trash can? Are you greedy? Squirrel, 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 please don't go. I'll be sad alone. And don't forget to buy food. Friends, did you enjoy today's episode? We tried to make a cool video full of information. If you liked it, tell us in the comments below. And don't forget to give us a like. We work really hard to give you the best content in the world.